have so many people coming through there that, you know, that, that I think about security. That uh, is always a concern, particularly since 9-11. Can you talk about some of the security measures the court has in place? Well, the first thing you'll notice is we do have an armed police officer right out front yes. with security, okay? And you'll also see that he has monitors where we've got security cameras throughout the whole court uh, and the appropriate places so that you know, for example, if somebody's in a courtroom and he sees arms going up and down, he kind of magically appears in the back of the courtroom to make sure there isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. We also have three security guards and they screen everything coming into the court. So all of our mail, all of that is screened in addition to the screen all of the people. Mm -hmm. um, and last year we had about 105,000 people come through our front doors. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, now, Judge Finn Anderson, the court has found opportunities to develop several innovative programs, some that resulted in cost savings to the city. Can you tell us about some of those? Well, some of the cost saving programs that we've been able to do, for example, would be home detention. And this is something that's authorized by the state legislature. And it, I'm gonna take an example, would be like a second offense DUI conviction. It's a mandatory 30 days in jail. Mm -hmm. You have to serve 20% of that in jail, which means you're gonna serve that at Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. But the remainder of that, which would be 24 days, can be done on home detention. Okay. And because it can be done on home detention, and we started that in about 05, it actually has reduced the prisoner maintenance budget for the police department. So a lot of the things we do may not have an effect on the court, but they have an effect on departments citywide. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, community service programs um, that are really actually part of punishment for when somebody doesn't do something in their quarter when they're supposed to do it, mm -hmm. and that's benefited community partnerships. So we've been able to help them, you know, maintain some of their facilities by ordering the defendants to perform this community service work at city facilities. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, that's great uh, that we're able to help so many people with the addition of these specialty courts. I understand the court has been the recipient of some pretty outstanding grants. Can you tell us about some of those? Yes, the, um, the Department of Justice, through the Violence Against Women Act, um, has grant opportunities, and we have applied and successfully received since 05, $1.5 million in domestic violence grants. Uh -huh. And what's important about this is this money doesn't just come to the court. Um, we have a, a domestic violence task force here in Glendale City Government, and we look at the needs of, of the prosecutor, of the police, of advocates, um, so for example, our current grant pays for two full-time people in the police department, not the court, in the police department. Mm -hmm. One's a high lethality advocate who works on those more serious cases, and another one is a protective order coordinator who helps coordinate service among um, 11 cities at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And then there, we do have a nonprofit partner, A New Leaf, and that the grant funds a bilingual advocate at the court five days a week to help individuals with protective orders. Mm -hmm. And uh, Judge Finn, uh, earlier you mentioned the court handles civil traffic violations. Uh, if someone is required to pay a fine, let's say a traffic fine, for example, is there an easy way for people to take care of those charges? Oh, there are many ways. <laughs> First of all, if you haven't been to a defensive driving school in the last two years, um, as long as it really is minor traffic. So we're talking speed, stop light, red light, you know, a moving offense that would have points on your record. You can go to defensive driving school. You don't even have to come to court. And you do pay a fee there, but the charge is then dismissed, okay? But you can only go once every two years. Um, if you want to pay your fine, um, you can do it in person, but you know, you're having to go through security, you're having to park, go through all that process. Mm -hmm. You can actually call the pay by phone line, which mm -hmm. is 623-930-2427, mm -hmm. or you can go to the Glendale City Court website and you can pay online, we can do web payments. So mm -hmm. we try to make it as user friendly as possible. Judge Finn, earlier we talked about the different types of civil cases the court handles. Can you tell us about what kind of criminal cases the city court handles? Um, well, the, the criminal cases, um, I think some numbers might be um, important here. Uh, for last year, we had about 36,000 cases overall. Uh, 23,000 of those were traffic. About 1,400 of those were driving under the influence of alcohol. Mm -hmm. But what's more significant is 7,000 of those were criminal misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. So that means shoplift, theft, 
assault, trespass, and then all those cases that if you have a special relationship mm -hmm. are designated as domestic violence. So we do have that um, volume of, of criminal cases. And they're much more expensive to process than a civil traffic case because you need a prosecutor, you frequently need a public defender, um, and then it takes more than one or two times to try to resolve those cases in court. Yeah, I understand that in many of those cases that it is necessary to have language interpreters. You know, there's so many different languages. Can you tell, uh, tell us how this is accomplished and why is it necessary? Well, first of all, it's mandated by all kinds of rules in the Constitution, et cetera, that it doesn't matter if you're a witness or a defendant, we have to provide an interpreter. So in terms of Spanish language, we have one and a half full-time interpreters. I have about 16 staff that are paid bilingual pay. Um, and then in terms of if I'm short a, a Spanish interpreter, we'll use language line or something like that, which is an agency that we can call on the phone and then get an interpreter on right away. Mm. And then we also have the responsibility, obviously, for lesser used languages. Um, and so far this year, we've provided interpreters for 22 lesser used languages. A couple of ones that you might not expect would be Dinka and Loma. Dinka, where did that come from? I wish I could answer that. I need to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a, a, there is a Dinka population that has um, resettled here in Glendale.